Jazzcast Pros. You ain't shit. You ain't about nothing. You're not going to amount to nothing. We have so much of the, the snapback and the, the name calling. Come on, man. We ain't children, man. We can we can open better dialogue than that. How does dogging me out, cussing me, telling me I ain't worth the skin that I'm printed on, cursing me to my child, cursing me in front of my child, and telling me I ain't shit has anything to do with me, father, or my child. Or even the, the disagreement me and you may have. What me and you have disagreement with, the child is the only agreement we have. The only agreement that we should we should be bonded by, but it's used as a weapon. Why can't we co-parent? Why can't we work together? I don't have to like you. You don't have to like me. But we have an agreement, which is this child. The influences of a father is important, just as much as as a mother. It should not be something to be dangled with and dangled as a carrot to a donkey, because that's what it's like. The father is to behave like a jackass because you are dealing with someone who is stubborn. That's not nice. <laughs> But is the truth. Is the truth. Greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome to Father Torch, the podcast to help you, the new and renew fathers, cope with the anxiety and stress of fatherhood so you can be the dad you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of Abimelech Foundation, father of nine, an artist. And my mission is to help help you reclaim your power and ease your concerns about being a father today. This episode is a little different this time around, and I want to speak to my brothers as well as my sisters. I hear a lot of complaints when it comes to the regard of your quality, stamina, your ability to perform, or even just be there. Sounds like I was talking about sex, didn't it? (laughs) But what I'm talking about, the theory of you ain't shit. A lot of my brothers are struggling. A lot of my fathers are struggling out here, working themselves to the death, to the bone, or just frustrated and depressed just because they can't live up to the means and measure of what someone else's ideal of a man or father should be. Fathers are not meant to live up to your standards versus to guide and protect, to love and nurture their offspring. Too many mixed messages and mixed signals dishumanizing and pretty much taking the balls out of a man's life and then cry feminist or then cry about, you know, what a real woman wants or what a real relationship should be. You know damn well what you was getting into when you got into it. So why is it one-sided when you can't have your way? Now, in this podcast is not to, again, promote or incite violence or any kind of animosity towards one another. However, I hear a lot of this. I've seen a lot of this working in the community and working with fathers, especially my black and brown, where there's almost a trend, a culture, even a way of life, that as soon as you are deemed the title father, you ain't shit. It's funny how that term can put down any man, knock them down, and the system supports it. But however, they tell you you have rights to do otherwise. To be a father is a task in itself. It has no competition or it does not have value to most people or to most others. Other cultures, maybe, uh, they may have a different view or different outlook of what a father should be. Some of it is emotionless, some of it is toxic, and others as well is survival. Then you have some that are nurturing and some are deemed to be worthy of manhood. But here in the States and here, here, <laughs> wherever you go, especially in the States, it is a double-edged sword. You can't be too much of a man because then you're too masculine. And you cannot be enough of a man because you need to provide, you know, the subsidence of everyone else versus who you really are. A father is not a bank book, but they betray it that way. A father is not someone to uh, gaslight and do what you will, but that's what we promote. We have a lot of mothers who withheld their children from their fathers just because of ill will, financial, uh, hearsay, uh, hurt feelings. Let's let's face the fact, hurt feelings. You know, he may have cheated. He may have can't do much what he used to do. He may may even act a fool, which is human nature. But all of those those 
hurts, those trends, those style of living should never interfere with the fact that the father should interact with his child. It should not be this hard or this difficult for him to relate or even see his child. It is like a dangling carrot now. It's to the point we live in a life that there's no more willing fathers, at least not advertised. Because we know we put those on the back burner. We don't want to advertise men actually being a father to their child. We tend to uh, do the same as the media, word of mouth, right? We we go around and talk about all the bad things that he have done and the things that he hasn't done and the things he won't do. But we never talk about the trials and the tribulations and the barriers which you've created that he cannot perform or provide for his child. Imagine that you and him is together. They didn't get along for whatever the reason. And I say whatever the reason, other than the malicious of hurting the child, there's no rhyming reason or fault that you have to, to hold the child away, away from him. However, to be spiteful, wicked, to be so caught up in your hurt emotions, because fathers have hurt emotions too, right? and, and, and it's not the gear to work towards, again, a battlefield between man and woman. However, what me and you have disagreement with, the child is the only agreement we have. The only agreement that we should we should be bonded by, but it's used as a weapon. Yeah, men out here struggling to work one job, five jobs damn near, feel like they're working five jobs to support the one child the best they can, and still it's not enough. They can't even see the child as they want. They can't call as they want. They can't do much what they want with the child, but yet they, they, it's like a paycheck, like a puppy. I only can pet you if I can feed you. You know, we we as a people have come a long way, a long way away from family structure and what it means to have a father in their child's life, whether it be a girl or a boy. We have a lot of fathers that are trying to be in their child's life, but being poisoned at the same time. Treated like ether, just cypering themselves. We have to do better with our children, we have to do better with ourselves, fathers. A lot of times we create a lot of pain because of the pain that we deal with or the no good shit that we're into. And the mothers do what they have to do. And this is not directed, again, not to all mothers, but we have some out there that ain't shit. They would rather cuss you. They would rather dog your name, drag you through the mud, than allow you to be a father. Because I don't understand how does one relates to the other. How does dogging me out, cussing me, telling me I ain't worth the skin I'm printed on, cursing me to my child, cursing me in front of my child, and telling me I ain't shit has anything to do with me fathering my child, or, e- or even the, the disagreement me and you may have. And that disagreement could be I couldn't afford to pay the bills, or, or I had a gambling problem, or I drink too much. Maybe I'm a smoker. I don't know. Maybe I was a crackhead. <laughs> Again, the possibilities our abundance. However, unless I'm conflicting harm, being destructive, unless I am willfully saying I don't want nothing to do with the child, why are you withholding a child from me? Speaking from personal experiences, I've been through many things where I couldn't sometimes even see my children at times. It's either I had transportation, I had enough money to get there, or I was too far away, or my schedule was going crazy. And sometimes I find myself even begging to say, hey, could you meet me halfway? Even that was a, even that was a fight. Let me, let me reveal this here. Fathers who don't live with their children, who are not seeing their children 24-7, have it a little more difficult than the ones who do live with their children and somewhat involved with the children. And I say somewhat because it's, it's, we, we can be here and not be involved. We can be here and not truly be present. But the difficulty where it happens with fathers who do not see their children on a regular basis or see them on a part-time basis or even per diem, see a lot of the pains that children go through and can't help that. That is painful. That is wicked. That is so painful that the point is that I can see the pain in my child I, or, or even have a foresight of what's going to take place, and I can't do nothing about it because I have no influence, no power, no no kind of uh, authority to say, no, let's do this. And if I and even if I fight, and then some of us we have we have fathers out here fighting like warriors, 
and still going to get an inch of influence because we don't have support. We don't have backative. We're not united. And when I say support and backative, I'm not talking about pitchforks and flames that are going to burn down the water. No, we don't have enough support to say, this is not right. Let us do it this way. Let him see his child or whatever the case may be. But if the foot was on the other hand, which oftentimes this is what it is, though at least for what I'm seeing, and please tell me if I'm wrong, we go to court and it's pro-mom. Mom can be a crackhead. She can be a crackhead slash porno star, stripper, and and just say call girl. There's nothing against the professions, you know, to each is his own. And as long as they have food, have four corners and a roof, which is the house, and they send them to school, they consider to be good mothers. But the same, the same thing could be the same profession, the same thing that the society has deemed to be bad. And if a man do it, he's considered to be unfit. Double standard. Now, you have a lot of fathers out here who have their children, who are raising their child, who are in their child's life. Not to say I want you to walk around and give them praises and put them on the media statue. But however, the, the propaganda of saying, you ain't shit because I'm mad at you, goes a long way. Not only the message of self-esteem and the message of outlook of being a father. We go through the emotions too. We have, we have doubts. And when you say things like, you ain't shit. You're not going to amount to be shit. And you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And you couldn't provide it. You're not a real man. It plays in our, it plays in our mind a thousand times in one minute. We might not show it because some men are very prideful. We might not show it because some of us, we rather cry inside than outside. We have men who see their children in pain. And then they hear you say, you ain't shit. And I can't do nothing about both of both ends. We fall into depression. We react differently. We get angry. That is our version of depression. We become distant. We become very, very aggressive. Very aggressive. I, I, I become aggressive because everything now is a problem. Because the fact is, I see the danger. I see the things that I want to teach them. I want to give to them. And I can't give to them. Why? Because the fact is, I can't see them. I can't teach them because you prevent it. And any, anything I do teach, you erase it. I pay support and I still can't see my child. I have visitation and it's not a problem if I don't see them. But if I, I was to withhold my child from you, the mother, I would be ridiculed, arrested, even thrown in jail. We got to do better, my, friend, my, my, my people. We got to do better, man. This is not, this is not fair and it's not, it's not just. And this is not, for all cases, let me make this clear. This is not for all cases because we have some men out there, they really ain't shit. They fathers for the moment, for the hour. They fathers, they fathers as long as the cameras are going. They are well endowed and blessed until, you know, no one else is looking. Let's be real here. Let's be, let's be you know, straight up. We have some men out there, they work the skin that they printed on, but they have beautiful children. Beautiful children. Oh my goodness, they have beautiful children. But they don't provide. They don't they don't have the, the empathetic heart, the development. They don't witness nothing. Just a title. Just a title. And when you have good men such as myself, when you have good men, you classify us as the same as a man who don't work the shit. Oh, that does something. That's us it does a lot to our psyche. It does a lot. Again, some men show it, some men, some men don't. I know I didn't know how to show it. So I was just angry and bitter. I became very sorrowful, sometimes depressed. And those who know me, I thank you for being there. I question a lot of times if I was ever good or bad or in between. Did I even measure up? Then you ask them, who you measure up to? Who, who's the example of the good father? Especially when you have one yourself. So again, who do I measure up to? Especially when you constantly remind me and tell me that I ain't shit. I want us to think about this. My mothers, my strong mothers, my queens, my empresses. I want you to think about this. Who am I compared to if you didn't have it yourself? And who am I comparing to if you know my story and what it means in itself to be a father? Because if I ain't shit, 
and I ain't doing anything, and I ain't about nothing. And you still allow me to fertilize your lawn. You still allow me to be within your spiritual realm, emotional realm, physical realm. That if I ain't shit, then what does that make you? Are you the shit keeper? Are you the developer? Are you the cause of me, the result of being shit? I hope not. You're not my problem. You didn't create this issue. Why can't we co-parent? Why can't we work together? I don't have to like you. You don't have to like me. But we have an agreement, which is this child. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, check out Living the Front Seat Life podcast. That's my podcast. I'm Coach Kelly Marie. I talk all about my journey as a woman living with mental illnesses. I have great guests. We talk about everything from food, being medicinal, how to set boundaries, how to say no, how to get therapy, and how to talk to your family and friends about mental health. I'm Living the Front Seat Life podcast. You can find us on the Jazzcast Pros Network and we're listening to this podcast right now. Be the light. Fight every time I decide or you decide or whenever you want to do it. There's got to be a tit for tat. When it can it be for the best development of the child? If my child say he want to play football and I was playing football, you ain't doing it because your father ain't shit and he did it. He was shit. And it's like, that is so unfair. That is so unjust. Because he wants to play sport like I wanted to play, like I play sport. And let's say, you know, just give a scenario. I play sports and, you know, I, and, and, and I, I made my big mistake because I got hyped. I got gaslighted and I, I got into the hype thinking I was some type of pimp and I had four or five girls. You found out or whatever the case may be, we broke up, we parted. And that story and narrative were being, the, were being the, the cornerstone of our being existence that why you hate me or why Every time that comes around, they might find you or something. And then your son comes up or your daughter comes up and say, hey, I want to play football with the first thing the mother or the other one does. They rage out. They tell you what you're not going to do because it reminds you of that pain. But it doesn't mean he or she will do the same thing. Teach better, do better. But it cannot do better, teach better, if all you do is give me an emotional charge of ignorance and pain, which we call trauma. We got to do better than that, man. We got we 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 got to. <laughs> there's no way we can get better as a parents, and our children don't see the improvement or even the relationship that we have. I'm not talking about getting back together, but man, we have to work better together. Are we going to agree on everything? No, I don't know. We're not going to agree on everything. There's some things we're not going to agree. It could be something simple as a haircut. We're not going to always agree, but however, give me the same right and privilege as you. I want to make decisions. I want to be involved. Involve me. What's wrong with calling and say, hey, uh, your son or daughter is um, playing ball? What's wrong, what's, 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 what's wrong with, with, with communicating and saying, hey, talk to your father. Me and his problem is not your problem. What is wrong with that? We have so much of the, the snapback and the, the name calling. Come on, man. We ain't children, man. We can we can open better dialogue than that. We can relate and talk. We can even state who and what we are about. We have too much, too much to lose to sit around and do absolutely nothing. Just to blame one another. But if he wasn't this, this wouldn't happen. If he wasn't this, this wouldn't happen. If she wasn't this, I could have done this. We, we both share the blame. We both share the blame. Even if I was the one who started the pain or that deceit or whatever the case may be, the child is not the product of that receipt. Again, this is not for every situation because, we again, we have some people out there. We have fathers out there. They ain't worth shit. And I, I, I'll be the first to say this. We have some who started out being about nothing and turned their self around, turned their life around and, and, and deserve that second chance or that, that chance to prove themselves. Then we have some, well, (laughs) I'm sorry. They are a professional idiot. They, their goal in mind is not the same as, you know, upholding the laws of fatherhood, much less manhood. They're still a boy. 
Fellas, we must make more of an effort, more of an effort to be conscious of our thinking, the things we do before we do it, the mates we choose, the woman we choose to mate with. It doesn't matter if you want to be a bachelor or a player. You still must be careful. Things happen. When we practice, it's what we get. So if you practice being out there, then, you know, you must practice the possibility that you will have one, a child. And if you have a child, it's no longer just you. It is you and them. And we must be more involved in the development of the child. Speak, walk, teaching, lessons, wisdom, knowledge. It cannot be all about she this and she didn't and he this and she didn't. Again, we have some mothers out here who purposely hold the child away from their father and still don't do good by the child. I urge you and I beg you to do better, to do differently. How can you want different and expect different from this child? You hold this child away from your father, and then when, what happens when the child starts to behave as a man that reminds you of the father? You don't pour it into them to the negative energy and the negative emotions that you have, and now they express it. And the thing about expression when it comes to males, we tend to eternalize kind of mimic what the child does, internalizing emotions. And we react in the way that society allows us to relax, to react, sorry, through anger, frustration, not through empathy, not through understanding, not through wisdom and, and overstanding. No, they say it's okay for you to be mad, but just don't be mad, which makes no sense. So it becomes confusing. So now we express ourselves in ways that makes no damn sense. We become manic. We become so out of control at times that we ourselves don't even know what we are doing. We just know we're reacting. There are some men out there who perceive that notion of they ain't shit because that's all that's been told to them. You ain't shit. And if we want a child to see a child in our own image to kind of at least remind us of what we used to be before we was corrupted. Then we get the nag. Then we get the constant reminder that what we're not, what we're going to do. Then we have people, women, sometimes even mothers, trying to tell us what a man should be. In one hand, we must consider that's motivation, advocacy. On the other hand, is a put down because you cannot tell me no more to be a man, the more I can tell you to be a woman. We go through struggles and pain and we can express it, but it's okay for you to express it, but we can't express it. Because we are deemed to be weak, futile, idiots, practically a dumbass. Even when we make a mistake, even when it's our fault, we consider a dumbass if we express certain type of emotion that is not acceptable in this society. We have moved so far from the village. We moved, we went right into the city. The city of divide, conquer and rule, the strong survive. So we have no more unity, no more strength in numbers other than gang up in mass to overrun. As fathers, we feel alone. We feel alone unless we express these emotions, anger, brutality, masculinity, tacitly, of course, because we need masculinity. It's what defines us as being male. And anything that can be used good can be used to bad. So that's not trying to make beta instead of alpha. Because it it does not work. To me, in my opinion, it's just not right. If I'm an alpha, if I'm a king, and if I'm a ruler, and then you want me to be a peasant, to push broomer, or weak, it doesn't sit right with the spirit. And as black men, we are not often anymore taught how to value ourselves, to have no self-value or worth to ourselves. So you have a lot of men out there. Yes, they ain't shit. And although they have problems and they got struggles and we look at it as like, you know, you can control yourself. But the thing is, if, if, if this is how I was grown, it's kind of hard to see that. I have qualities and they, they, you, you may possess the ability to do well, but that, for how long can I do it? I can't. Especially when I'm constantly being reminded that I'm not. You know how hard it is to have a label and then still trying to do right as a man 
much less a woman, but as a black man, it is difficult. It is difficult because, again, I can't express myself as a woman could. I got to go in the corner and cry. And if I cry, I can't cry too long. And if I cry, if I cry, it has to be a teardrop, not not a boohoo, snot running, water coming out my mouth kind of cry. I, even the way I cry is regulated as a man. And if I do such things, again, I'm weak, soft, I'm a pussy. I get all these names. I get all these degradations and all these dehumanizing words and measures. I'm not allowed to have a moment. And as a father, it's difficult. It is so difficult to not have a say, but have authority. And everything I have to fight, even in my own house, I have to fight to have a word. If I don't like something, it's never discussed. It's you just being mad, you just miserable. It can't be your word is last. Because I trust what you say. The key word, we don't have trust with one another anymore. We in relationships for the sheer pleasure, for the moment, we live for the second. There's no long jeopardy, there's no discussion, there's no open communication. There's no, hey, let's get to know one another. Even if I slept with you the first night, still should be a conversation. How was it? How did you feel about it? Do you feel connected? Not we in love and uh, we're going to have a beautiful future because it's make-believe land, we're going to do something. No, how was it? How did you feel? Did it seem like I was easy? Did you feel what I feel? Let's discuss this. Let's talk about it. Let's have more dates. Let us build together. Because we're going to have a future. We're going to know we've got what we have to destroy in that path and what we have to build in that path. What we have to rebuild in our, in our personal selves and what we have to allow to close in our personal selves. We don't have conversations. We have illusion and illusional talk, backward talk. We talk about how fat my ass is, how big my pockets are, how much money I'm getting but don't know where I'm getting it from. We talk about illusions of things that don't mean nothing. Is it about nothing? And then we want something from it because now we have a responsibility. That is not fair. So the reality is you're both in shit if neither one of you communicated about how you want to make it or do something together. It can't be only strictly, strictly, excuse me, about the physical and not understanding that there's a possibility this may happen. Hey, if y'all want to just play around, play around and do things, hey, again, that is wonderful. Be an adult about it. Be responsible about it. But if you have children together and you are together or not together, the only agreement we must have, we must have, is that we have this child together and we must we must invest in their development, in their psyche, in their learning, is their wisdom and self-esteem, their worthiness and their love. It cannot be you ain't shit because this is what I think you are versus who you are. Give props when there's props in do. Respect one another because neither one of y'all could have done this by yourself. Folks, it's my time right now, and I, I hate to leave you at this cliffhanger because I have more to say, but catch me next Sunday. Let us continue the conversation about why you ain't shit and why you should be better than the shit that I'm talking to you. You are love and you are worthy, but nothing comes easy and nothing comes because you think you are. You got to put in that work. My father's. You got to put in that work and you got to put in that work not expecting to be put on the mantle or a trophy or a hold of a car. Being a man is more than showing off to someone to make you prove your manhood. Being a man, being a father is more than simply a title. It is a rite of passage. It is the highest honor a man can receive on this planet, much less the universe. Ain't no higher authority than a father, heavenly or earth. No higher authority. So to have that, we should take it seriously. We should be about it. I'm Ra from Father Torch. Please leave your comments. Check me out next Sunday. Let me know what you think. Please be honest. Respectful, but be honest. FatherTorch.com Also, you can check me out at Abimelech Foundation or Abimelech.org. Let me know if this speaks to you. 
And let me know if you even want to come on. I, I wouldn't mind having a conversation. Be blessed, everyone. Jack I. Hey, if you like this episode, check out Getting Real with Bossy, where we chat about what it's like to be a woman business owner. You'll hear interviews with women who are doing what it takes to succeed and the reality of what that looks like. We cover all the topics, figuring out the rules and regulations, navigating business partnerships, even if that's your spouse, motherhood while running a business, working within your values, and all the ups and downs of being the boss. Are you ready to get real? Pop over to our podcast, Getting Real with Bossy. If you've been thinking about starting a podcast and you want to include interviews with people across town, Riverside.fm offers unbelievable high-quality recordings regardless of your or your guest internet quality, and it also gives you separate audio and video tracks for each person speaking. It's high-tech, but easy to use, and unlike Zoom, you don't have to install anything on your computer, and your guests don't either. Riverside.fm is the leading platform to record studio-quality audio or video podcast. They even have a really cool video editor to help you make content for social media. Head over to Riverside.fm and use promo code JazzyCast to get 60 free minutes of recording and 15% off a membership plan. The link is in the show notes.